and we're back. What is up, y'all? It's Tony Holiday, back at it again, another video. Been a while, but that's because of the release of Tony Holiday Presents Sound Playground Volume 1. For those of you who have already copped it, I can't tell you how much I really appreciate that. I've been getting some really great feedback, some really great reviews on the uh, kit, and people are using it with some really cool productions. So thank you so much for doing that. If you haven't copped it, please go check it out. I put out a video on Tuesday, which my friends at Tamarack film. I'm really proud of it, and I hope you enjoyed the kit if you already have it. If you haven't, go check it out and see what that's all about. All of the sounds that we're using in the video today are actually from that kit. But that's enough of that. Today, what I wanna show you guys is actually kind of like a part two of an other video that we've had in the past. The absolute best way to do 808s in Logic, and that was using the Soft Synth Alchemy. Now, I still do recommend using Alchemy for things like 808 glides. I've done a video on that as well, which you can check up here, and that'll kind of show you guys the difference and why I like it. But today's video, we're actually gonna focus on just doing plain old 808s, a plain old sampler, we're using the new 10.5 Q sampler in Logic Pro 10.5. Before we get started, please go follow me on all socials. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. Let's get into the video, you guys. I wanna show you guys the absolute best way to do 808s in Logic after getting the new 10.5 update, and it's using the Q sampler and using some drag and drop third party samples. But yeah, let's get into the video. All right, you guys, so you should be able to see my DAW here. Let's get into how do we make these 808s and what's the best way to do it in Logic 10.5. So as you can see here, guys, in my DAW, I have a couple different things here. So I have a melody, which I actually just grabbed an Apple loop and I just kind of did a little bit of effects on it to kind of give it uh, some more space and kind of just make it a little bit better, basically. That's called Good Morning Harp. And for the Apple loops, it is a D sharp and the tempo, original tempo is 82. Now this project that we're working in is 160, so it's basically a little less than double. So it's a little bit sped up and I'll play that for you really quick. It kind of feels almost like happy-go-lucky broccoli or um, Kodak Black patty cake, something like that. And then the drum section here, and these are all from the new sound pack, you guys. Tony Holiday presents. Sound Playground Volume 1. I got a clap, kick, clap, hi-hat, kick, snare, a couple perks, an open hat, and then the 808s are down here. So I'll listen to the drum loop really quick and we'll pull up the step sequencer, which is what I made it in. Last but not least, you guys, we have the 808s down here. I wanna show you actually two different types of 808s here. So one's gonna be like a short sample and one's gonna be more of a longer sample. And I'm gonna show you why um, we wanna use the Q sampler and why it's super effective and why in my opinion is the best way to do 808s in Logic since the 10.5 update. Now let's get our 808 on the project. What we're gonna do first off guys is press F on our keyboard so it opens up our all files on the right here. Yours probably won't look like this to start. I have mine set up so that I can just go straight from the one folder, Sound Playground Volume 1. If I go into bookmarks, I'd have Tony Holiday presents Sound Playground Volume 1 right there. If you wanna do that, what you just need to do is go into whatever folder you want. So for example, I just pressed home here. Let's pretend I need my downloads folder. I would go downloads, right click, bookmark downloads, and then that's going to appear in this one right here when I click that. From the new sound pack here, guys, let's obviously go into the 808 folder. And I made three different folders of 808s here, you guys. Now these are all the same samples, but they're just affected differently. So the original tunings includes all the samples and that's actually the original key that I made them in when I synthesized them. The tune to C clean is the same thing, but I tuned them all to C. Also tune to C filthy, which is uh, some added distortion and cool effects, really makes them bang in the mix. I like the kind of deep, hard hitting 808s best. So that's what we're gonna use in this project today. So let's actually drag in this one here, the Beebs. So I'm gonna grab that, the Beebs C, we're in the filthy folder. And if you go over to your project here on the left-hand side, under where all your tracks are, You'll see it says create new track using. We wanna go quick sampler optimized and just drag and drop it onto there. And this is the Q sampler that comes up. Couple things to take note of you guys. The first one being this section here in the amp, polyphony 16. Now what that means is that there's 16 voices playing. We don't need that for bass. This isn't like a super saw or anything like that. Usually with bass, you only want one voice playing because it'll be too muddy in the mix and it's just not something that we wanna do. So we're gonna change that to mono. The volume 
volume automatically comes at negative six dB. And what you can do is you can just push that up to zero. This root key here, because we dragged it onto the optimized uh, one there, when we dragged it onto the tracks, it's going to actually analyze the key of the sample and it's gonna make the root key here and put how many kind of cents it's off. That's why you wanna drag it onto optimize. If you do it onto original, it's just always gonna put it onto middle C. Optimize is the best way to quickly drag and drop your samples in. And we can see it says negative 39 cents as well. So let's actually pitch it up 39 cents. And then that way we know that we're right on C2. And then we know all our 808s are gonna be in key like that. The last thing I wanna do here, guys, is down to this envelope under the amp section. It says ADSR here. I wanna actually change it to AR. The reason for that is because what we're doing is we're actually eliminating the decay, the hold, and the sustain from the envelope. And what that means is that those three parameters won't affect the file anymore. And I'll show you kind of why we want to do that in a second. But for now, we'll do that and we'll just turn the re release down to zero. Awesome. So this is kind of like the default 808, what you want to do for that. If you want to save this, you also could do that and go save as default. And then I think if you drag and drop from there, it should appear like that. If it doesn't, you can open a Q sampler first on your channel strip and then drag in your sample and it says original or optimized. I just prefer to drag it onto the track there. And this is what the beads is going to sound like. I also have these 808 patterns here made. Let's just actually drag one of those down. If you ever want to duplicate a MIDI region, you can just click on one of them and then press option on your keyboard and drag it down, release, and it'll actually copy the same MIDI down or audio file if you have one of those. So let's take a listen to this 808 pattern. This is gonna be kind of where I wanna show you guys why we changed the envelope to just AR here. As you can see, this is kind of a shorter 808. Typically, you might see them to be a little longer around here, and that's exactly what we have with these other samples. So for example, Bad Intentions, Q Sampler, you can see it's a little bit longer there. The reason for the AR is we wanna use the actual MIDI length of notes to determine how long we actually want the note to last. If we drag the sustain all the way down, you can see that it's just gonna play this click. And if you watch the actual sample here in the Q sampler, it's only actually playing the half tenth of a second. The easiest way to do it is like the AR. That way you have control over the attack and also the release. And then what dictates the length of the note is actually how long the MIDI note is going to be, provided that the sample is played all the way through. So this sample's only, it's actually less than a second long. It's about 0.75 seconds long. So this is not gonna play all the way through because this won't be a second long, but take a listen. Versus if we drag the MIDI note backwards, you see how it cuts off like that right away. That's the reason why we wanna have it as just the attack and release as the amp envelope, because that gives us the freedom to create how long we want the MIDI notes based on how long we want the actual audio to play for. What I actually like to do as well is on the release, I'll add like, say, I don't know, say I add like maybe 250 or something like that. And that what I'll do is just taper it off. So if we're even doing short 808s, it'll kind of sound nice. It won't just chop right off at the end. So I'll show you what I mean with that right now. So you see how it kind of like fades out a little bit versus if we have this all the way off, it just cuts right off. Doesn't sound very good. I typically like to add on a little bit there just so we always know that it's gonna kind of finish off nicely. Now, what happens if we wanna take the MIDI note and actually play it all the way out? You can do that by pressing shift forward slash. That's called force legato. If we play it now, it's not gonna play the whole length. That's because the sample is only 0.75 seconds long. What if we wanna do this with a longer one? Bad Intentions is a long 808. As you can see, it's almost a whole second longer than the first one. Now let's take a listen to this here. You can see we have it on AR. We have the releases at about 300 milliseconds there. What if we did want to actually have this one play out? We wanna take this all the way out like that, and then you want this to play for this many bars. Say it's like a sub bass. So we can click Hue Sampler. As you can see, it only got to about there. It's not playing the whole thing. Now, this is a really cool function as well with the Q samplers. You can go into this loop mode here where it says no loop and you click that and you go forward. What that's gonna do is actually automatically analyze the wave file sample and it's gonna pick the best loop point to play as long as the MIDI note 
um, given it'll just loop inside the middle one there. So I'll show you what I mean with that, is if we play this, we wanna play it all the way to the end. So you kind of hear that wavy going back and forth. That's because it's playing, it's going to the loop point and it's playing as long as the MIDI note is. That's not necessarily the most pleasant 808 bass there, but what you can do is you can actually change different parameters in here and then that will make it so that it can sound like a just long sub bass 808 note. That's kind of why I wanna use the Q sampler guys is I find it to be so nice, just the amount of different parameters you can affect and how easy it is to do that as well. You know, you have these fade options here. You can actually shorten the sample if you want to, you can uh, lengthen it, whatever you wanna do with that. And it's all really easy to see in this Q sampler mode here. Let's actually put this on with the track. Let's do a couple quick effects just to kind of bring them out in the mix a little bit so I can show you guys if maybe you are struggling with your 808s, how to really bring them out. For example, if we're going on to the Beebs, kind of a trick that I did in also my how to make your kicks hit harder video, go into your uh, web browser here. And we know that this song is in D sharp when we looked at the Apple loop. Search D sharp frequency chart and that'll pull up stuff like this. This one's really good here, just nice and simple. So this will have all the notes here and you can see the frequency in which you want to boost up to make sure they come through the mix if that's the key of your song. We're in D sharp. 1945, 3889 are probably too low. The 77, 78, and 155, 56, however, are bang on for us. Go back to our project here. We can go to the Beebs, get a channel EQ. We can take one of these band passes. We can type in 78 hertz, and this one will do 156, double what? 78 is. Boost that by about three decibels and the same for that one. You can thin it out as well. So it's just kind of like a little blip in the channel EQ there. And then with the 808 uh, channel EQ off, it's kind of hard to tell, but in the final mix, you will definitely be able to notice just by making those little boosts there as well. What you can also do under the drums, so I have a compressor here as well, side chain, instrument, um, the Beebs instrument nine, and now let's play it. So what that's doing is the compressor, this guy here, is compressing this entire drum bus every time the 808 comes in so you can hear it kind of smack through the mix a little more. Last but not least, you guys, the tremble is uh, a bit kind of sitting back in the mix. I kind of made it like a deep sort of R&B sub bass. Let's say, for example, that we want to bring that out a little more. We can go onto the uh, channel strip. We can add a distortion. So distortion, distortion, stereo. The output I'm going to turn down to negative one so we're not clipping. And then what we can also do here is probably turn the drive down a bit, let's say to 2.5, and we'll kind of affect it from there. the drive is going to add some high frequencies there to kind of distort it. The tone will affect it based on where you set it. So as you can see, high end, very distorted. It's almost like a boombox cartel kind of 808, but that's another really good way, guys, if you want to add some frequencies. So for this one, I'm going to add maybe like around, let's say that, drive down. As you can see, you guys, the Q sampler is an extremely powerful sampler. In my opinion, it's the easiest and best way to do your 808s when you're working in Logic. But yeah, guys, with that being said, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you understand why the Q sampler is an awesome way to do 808s with Logic. Thank you so much for all of you that have already purchased Sound Playground Volume 1. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe. I'm gonna be putting out more tutorials, especially to do with the sound pack. Follow me on all socials. That's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. It's Tony Holiday. I will see you in the next video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Tony Holiday, signing off. Cheers.